guys and welcome to another tutorial in this case we're going to be creating an amazing bubble effect and you will learn a lot of cool little tricks all the files will be dropped in the description for free you can have this one on my patreon so enjoy and watch the full tutorial leave a comment if you have any doubts and i will be there to answer them guys do you want to join a really nice server we have tons of different channels we have effects modeling Luda, compositing we will have resources for every type of discipline so hop in and have fun i also have a patreon page where you can support me i have every single file i have polls i have even some tools guidance so if you are interested you may have a look thank you hello guys so we are here in the file so let's look and let's break down this amazing effect. It's quite simple, but there are some things that we should consider. Let's have a look. This effect consists on three different things. A balloon simulation, a smoke simulation inside the balloon simulation. They are one after the other. First is the balloon, then is the smoke. And a third simulation which comes after the smoke simulation, which is a particle. As you can see, I managed to merge all of those and it doesn't break at all. There is not a single particle going outside. There is a good conservation of volume. It's not a perfect conservation of volume because that's how pyro works. But I managed to have a good conservation, which that is very important. So let's begin how this was done. And you will see that the setup is actually very simple. So let's hop in. And to begin with, what do we have here? We have a sphere. Let's hop in with this wireframe and let's look at it. It's just a, a sphere with polygon. This is the radius and a frequency of three. I think as it, it really doesn't matter. I created a box contain this sphere, of course. And then I added a little bit of bound here with the minimum size. And I did a polywire. The polywire grabs the edges and creates this shape, which is going to be our container. This is going to be, of course, our collision. You can see here, this is the same as doing this. So let's remesh it a little bit. And we are going to set a name. In this case, I'm using one of my nodes, which is a name setter. But basically, I'm going to show you how to create this. It's with a connectivity. The connectivity has to be on primitives. And then you have to make a wrangle. The wrangle is going to be on primitives and we are going to set the names like so. So how this code works, it's very simple, guys. Basically, I'm creating a name which is going to start with piece. In this case, it could be here. And I'm going to trans transform all of my connectivity, as you can see here, on primitives. We have class of zero. If you had two spheres, we would have two. Uh, 0, 1, 1. If we have 3, we will have 0, 1, and 2. Uh, so in this case, we are going to transform this integer to a string so we can concatenate one next to another. So as you can see, a sphere 0. Pretty much that's what I'm doing here. There's not a single difference. I'm going to plug in the sphere right here. Or I can just delete this and move on. That trick was with A and pushing uh, upwards. So let's smooth this sphere because as you can see, this is quite edgy. And let's create a balloon constraint cloth. In this situation, what I ended up doing is creating just these values. A stiffness of 1, but this goes to 10,000. And a stiffness of 1 on band, and this goes to 0 0.00001. There's nothing else. It's as simple as that. And the pressure is, is, is what's going to remain the sphere uh, blobby, you know? If you don't have pressure, the cloth will go like this. But with pressure, it will remain its shape. So, just add a bellum constraint and that pressure here. And you don't need to touch anything else. This will work just fine. And, you know, in the simulation, as you can see right here, it bounces and then it grows this is very important why because we need a rest blend we're going to create this kind of shape 
which is the same but bigger it's going to go after the pressure and this is the shape or the size we are going to be wanting on our simulation we're going to use just a simple balloon solver because we don't need to dive so much into it we're going to add four sub steps and nothing else we're going to hop in we're going to go into the balloon rest plan we're going to plug this in so the way this uh, node works is that we are going to transform this initial shape with all these output groups with a stretch and here the, also the stretch we could even add this group bend which in this case is not quite necessary and what we are going to do is to blend between one another so in this case this is small and in this case this is big so the solver is going to calculate the difference between these two different calculations between these two different states it's going to go from small to big without exploding imploding breaking it's just going to work so the only thing you need to do is to go to each sub step grab the constraint groups you need we could have band here remember if you have these guys you will always have these groups you can of course add the band and i suggest you to try it only try it if you like it you keep it if you don't like it you don't keep it there's nothing wrong with, between we trying new things so i animated this balloon as you can see right here it's going to from 0 to 1 and it will stop right here and it, it works very nicely that's how it is uh, i think i added yeah i added a ground plane and after this i had a balloon uh, post process with a loop on and a special blur of 0 1 with a detangle the detangle is going to basically detangle the collisions that's how it is and we cache this out as a bubble once we have this we're going to grab this sphere right here and we're going to transform it into a bdb the bdb is going to be basic we're going to change this to collisions we're going to fill interior and we're going to click on the plus sign grab a point dot b you can do it like this and choose the point dot b the bdb name is going to be b and we're going to use displacement velocity and acceleration this is going to be basically this smog you see here nothing else we could be changing this to make it bigger or smaller we're going to use three bdb activate this is basically because we want to have a larger um, bounding box on the collision so uh, we can have a, we can be sure that the smog is not going to clip outside its interior if we go here this is very very important we need to invert we need to invert this because we want smoke inside and if this is an SDF, we're not going to have any type of smoke. So let's invert it. We cannot see anything in here, but if you imagine, we will have everything here being a collision. Then we're going to grab this collision. We're going to make an ISO offset called density of 100 samples. And uh, we're going to grab a time shift with a scatter of 10,000 points with angles. This is what it is. is going to be the source and this is going to be the initial particles. This is for later. It's going to be. This should go here. It's going to be with the pop network. But these are the sources. So, anyways. So, first of all, let's hop in into the smoke simulation, which looks like this. We visualize only the velocity. It will look something like this. If we also visualize the bubble, it will look something like this. You can see the smoke is moving with the bubble. So how did I manage to do this? Because this is usually very complex if you don't know what to do. So let's hop in and watch our smoke. And as you can see, it looks quite simple. But if you don't know what to use or what to do, you will face some problems here. But I'm going to give you the tricks. So to begin with, the sparse object and the smoke uh, sparse should be connected like this. This and this. We need to make a merge so we can have a static object. Now, in this smoke sparse solver, we need to go into the resizing. The padding is going to be set, set to one, uh, 0 0.1. Otherwise, it's going to be very big. It's going to extend a lot. And we don't want to have that. Uh, as you can see, this is very big. And we're going to waste resources on our computer. So let's keep it on one. 
Then we're going to go into advection, always using your simulations, BFECC and clamp. It's better, it looks better. Don't worry about it, you can go this method. There are tons of videos about it. Collisions. This is the trick so you don't lose so much volume. Use volume velocity for collisions and turn this off. I don't know why it works so well with this. I should dive in a little bit on the technical part. But in this case, like if you have a collision that has to move a smoke, this is the solution. Always, well, not always, but in this case, max sub steps up to should be fine. And let's move into the static object. I want to show you something. And uh, let's go to frame one, only one frame. So the static object, we're going to be grabbing. Well, we are not going to use this one, the soft path, because this is for polygons. We're only going to use on the collisions, use the deforming geometry, go to volume, use volume collisions, volume sample by size. The size is going to be 0 0.02. Same as this one, we could in fact uh, do this. This is overkill, guys, but it looks good, so I don't care. And the proxy volume has to be the out collision. The out collision is the one we inverted right here. Do you remember? And you will see if I visualize the collision guide on here, the uh, collisions, that this is inverted. This is not how a sphere should look. But if we dive in, we will see that it is actually empty which is what we wanted. So let's pop out and let's move. Guys, let's move and let's see our volume source. Super, extremely easy. Grab the source, which is the SDF, which is animated, but we're only going to be animating the source scale from one to zero right here. Nothing else. And enlarge the fields to contain sources. No micro solvers, no anything. At the end of the day, we're going to import these fields. We are going to use a dop import. Move this one here. Let's move uh, to liquid, not to smoke, so we can have everything. Let's not import temperature because we do not have temperature. Um, we convert this into BDB. We vector merge everything so it's more uh, tidy for the BDB. And we are going to cache this out. And of course, it was, it's going to look like this. Everything works just fine. Um, something to take into account is that you should, or you, yeah, you should try to use always your heap folder and something simple like using dollar os, where os is the name of the node, which is this one. Then we're going to make for our final step. We're going to use the initial particles right here. We're going to add back the particles with our simulation. You can see it's quite nice. This is perhaps a little bit more complicated, but nothing else. It's just uh, some particles being uh, set to all points. This is the stop of the particles. The width is going to be at F. So if here the at F is equal to start, it's going to be one. So it's only going to be active for one single frame. This is extremely fast. In this case, we're going to use a pop at back. Um, with this, with the second context in this case is this velocity, as you can see. We're going to use a velocity blend of 0.8 with the update velocity. I think that's a point drag of 0.001, so we can have a little stop. Um, and we're going to use we use object transform. This is as usual. Uh, nothing else, nothing, literally nothing else, just a static object. In this case, we're going to grab the sphere, which is the bubble from the balloon simulation, use the forming. We could display this, as you can see, this is the simulation. Uh, and we're going to invert the sign so the particles are inside. Otherwise, it would just crash and, and the bubbles and the particles will go outside. Uh, we are going, this is only for the visualization, alpha of 1. This is also an alpha of 1. I'm grabbing the sphere, uh, sorry, alpha of point, point 0.1. And these are the guides. So we are also grabbing the smoke and we're watching everything together. And if we go to smooth, this is our final effect. Thanks for watching the full tutorial. If you are here, it's that you enjoyed the tutorial. So leave a comment, subscribe. You can join my Discord channel, link down below. And nothing else. See you guys.